Welcome to War Warhammer Book Club. Welcome, okay, welcome, hey there, cereal under, ow, my head, <laughs> this hurts my back. Welcome to Warhammer Book Club. Uh, this is technically the first episode, even though uh, we've already been here and done this. So we have been talking about Warhammer on our normal podcast, but it was taking up more and more of it, so we figured split it up into its own little dinger. Yep. So we're going to be, yeah, we're going to be talking about Warhammer, because I haven't... So we've all been making our way through the Horus Heresy books. Yeah, I guess we're, we're still in uh, pre-Warhammer. Yeah, 40k. We're, we're in pre-Warhammer. This is going to be... Yeah, yeah. We're and we're, we're all Warhammer total series. noobs as far as Warhammer stuff goes. Like, we're slowly... We've played the odd game. We know a bit of the lore. Just a little bit. But yeah, we don't collect the, the figures or, or, or do the tabletops. Or I'm going to be I'm getting into collecting that. the figures. You, you're a monster. I'll do that instead of Pokemon cards. Okay. Sorry, brother. I, I can condone that. Sorry, brother. I don't have room for well, that. Well, no, I'll buy them and then we play. Okay. Nintendo, we play. Can you paint? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, wait. Am I able to paint? Yeah. No. What the fuck? I thought you were asking. Would that question have been otherwise? I thought you were asking if you're allowed to paint Warhammers. Like, Wait, I thought paint like, was. Chris, like, am I allowed to paint the Warhammers? Like, are they able to be mind? painted? God damn it. I thought that paint was code for like shooting heroin or something. <laughs> you guys want to go paint later? Want to go paint and get Demi Lovato? Oh. Alright. I'm sorry. She didn't die from that, did she? I know. Wouldn't matter anyway. I still care. Funny. Welcome to the Warhammer Podcast. I've been uh, listening because I do audiobooks because I. Chris is weird. He likes some weird. To to I've uh, I've been listening to Fulgrim, and we're halfway through probably, and that game, that book's slow. <laughs> it is the worst book in the series so far. I don't hate it, but it is slow. It's the worst. It's not bad. Yes, yeah, it's still a decent book, but it is the worst of the ones I've uh, listened to so far. So I've done. Is this still a just kind of low thing? Sorry to. Doesn't matter. Well, okay. Fix it in post. Okay. Post <laughs> Sorry. It just dawned on me. That we, uh, I don't know what we're going to call this yet. The Warhammer Book Club. The Warhammer Book Club. It's been decided. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we'll need someone. We'll need to make an image somehow at some point. I think I have a program. Cool. I unsubbed from Adobe because they can eat my asshole. Did I tell you how and hard it was them. to unsub from Adobe? How hard I'd was like it? get into like support with somebody to be like, can I unsubscribe? And they're like, Check out this other package we have, and I'm like, all but, right, that's how this is going to be, okay. But what if I unsubscribe, though? What? Like you, oh, what yeah, if I just unsubscribe, though? I should have been like that. But I got <laughs> But aggressive. we have this great package. It's like, yeah, though. Yeah, your package came my asshole. Okay. But um, yeah, so, I've, so Warhammer so, talk. <laughs> so yeah, I've listened to Horus Rising, False Gods, Galaxy in Flames, and Flight of the Eisenstein so far. That's where I'm at. Miles, you're two in. I am technically still waiting for Galaxy in Flames to show up. <laughs> so you've jumped ahead because something else showed up earlier. Yes, and Joseph told me that it was a story that is, like a prequel. I guess, prequel slash parallel Side to what's thing. happening. Yeah. So you've been listening to the Descent of, or you've been reading. I wow. literally read it 20 minutes before I got here. Cool. Descent of Angels? Yes. And then you read a bit of um, Robo. Yeah, so I, I, I'm Robo about 100 pages into that, actually. Um, and it's just covering um, the purging of orcs on Thoas. Thoas? Th is that how you say it? I don't know it? Wow, what the word is. Thoas. How do you spell it? T-H-O-A-S. Thoas. 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 I don't know. It doesn't... I've never read it out loud. When I listen to it, I can tell you. Yeah. Is there audiobooks for the Primarchs? There is, right? Probably. I think we looked those up. Um, yeah. No, it's pretty cool. It's just all about Gulliman. Gulliman is and, the uh, uh, Primarch of the Ultramarines. And Wait, he's not the Primarch of Ghosts? Don't. <laughs> and I now, I now realize when we initially <laughs> talked about him, like, maybe why the... Or why Horace was so... Scared like, of... Like, to be like, I'm gonna make sure that they're there so yeah, that I can at, get rid of them. Like, before the his point, betrayal is known, yeah, like, maneuver like, them. Yeah, at the point sense. of the story where, uh, uh, where we are, um, collectively, as far as we've gotten, uh, Horus has sent off Sanguinius and Gulliman to other things... Because he knows that they're never going to fight with him. I, I think he was sending Sanguinius off in hopes that he falls to a demon god there. Who knows what's going to happen? Or not a demon god. Uh, okay, a demon good. prince. Um, but who knows what's actually going to happen there. I have no idea. 
But I have a strong suspicion Sanguinius does not fall to chaos because he seems really fucking sanguine. Noble. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he is noble. Very noble. Um, yeah, so. And Descent of Angels, what's that, that been about so far? Ba- well, so it just, I'm only in the prelude because it was 20 minutes of reading. Yeah. Um, basically, it just covers, like, it's, it. even though they have power armor and they have a chain sword. It's very, like, small power armor. Like, they're human-sized people. Yeah, yeah. Um, power armor junior. They're, they're not Astartes. They're not, but they're, like, so some. Are they get Astartes? Um, some civilization that was before them, or their first, uh, the first people on the planet at least, had power armor of some sort, obviously. Yeah. From, from an STC, probably. Well, yeah, so the human race uh, scattered about um, before the Astartes were even a thing, before the Emperor was even a thing, and then there was the Age of Strife, where the warp got um, really bad and started messing things up. And, and then people couldn't reach each other? Like, everyone got isolated? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, but humans were already starting to go to other solar systems, and it would just take generations and generations for it to happen. They were sending entire ships over there. The generation fleets, yeah. And then they would break those down, and that would become assets and stuff for living on these planets. Mm. So I, it's still a bit um, of a blur to me. I don't know much about it, because I haven't seen it in a book yet. Basically, the prelude has just been like, it's it's been 5,000 years um, on, on the Caliban as the planet. Yeah, some of them aren't even sure if... Terra even exists. Yeah, like, like it's so long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, but then it, it seems like it's a very like a dark or I don't know um, dark age fan. Th- yeah, it's, it's a like, weird mix of like science fiction, like futuristic sci fi power armor, and like Knights of the Round Table, King Arthur ass bullshit, which is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, oh, and, a jump from the other stories. Yeah, and. Uh, and uh, it, it's it's already introduced the Primarch, um, which is Lionel Johnson. Oh, it's so cool, um, Lionel Johnson. Lionel Johnson. <laughs> and uh, and uh, it, they found him. He was a just a wild man living in the woods and stuff. Yeah. And he very I don't know. They said the matter in a matter of days after bringing him in, he learned language. He learned everything, and yeah. he was just. Just this amazing person. He just became the like boss. Two days. Yeah, because that's yeah. just how mafia works. Yeah, because so it. Um, I think the prelude talked about like uh, I'm not too far. They were kind of scattered about, uh, and there was like different factions and there were wars going on between them and conflict. But in the middle of this, the forest of Caliban, uh, there was these like great beasts uh, that would take uh, like a ton of soldiers to fight up against, and, and not, probably not even win. Yeah, yeah, like they so. would be, they would lose entire hunting parties to these things. And Lionel Johnson beat the fuck out of them with his bare hands hands out in the woods. Like, super fucking badass. Um, What it had said so far was that they were... um, He proposed that it would be a six-year campaign. To wipe them out. To get rid of all the great beasts so far, anyway. And and it ended up taking ten years. But he is successful. He has purged the planet of uh, great beasts. Yeah. Yeah, so I think... um, the story takes place uh, leading up to the slaying of the great beasts, uh, like the last e- two years or so. Um, it goes back and forth. Um, I guess it doesn't really go back and forth. It's it's one character's perspective the whole time, which do- is very unique. I don't think any of the other books have been just one Wait, character. Wait, Descent of Angels is only from one dude? Yeah, it's it's from one guy's perspective. Oh, cool. Um, so but, yeah, all the other ones. I was going to say it hasn't introduced him. I guess okay. uh, what I've read to so Eisenstein... Far. Oh, it was all Garrow, wasn't it? Was it? It didn't cover any of the Remembrance series from their perspective. I'm trying to remember now. Yeah, I don't think Eisenstein jumped at all. It might have jumped to action crews. I think but, it was just Garrow. That's yeah. Cool. So, I, I feel like those are the most concise stories. Yeah. Um, right now I'm reading Mechanicum. And it's jumping between five different characters. <laughs> Before you dive into mechanic, yeah, you know, yeah, that's all I'll say about Fulgrim without get like because Miles is definitely is gonna get to that at some point and read that. So well, I intend to <laughs> as soon as Galaxy of Flames gets yeah. there. Um, that that book, it uh, man, the, the Emperor's children are a bunch of shitheads. 
Yeah. They are yeah. the worst Legion with the worst Primarch, is all yeah. I'll really say there. And also, are they is Solomon that? just discount Loken? Is that... Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, it, this... And that, I like, think that was... Solomon? There's a character named Solomon. Okay, I was like, do you mean Cinderman? <laughs> I, uh, I, I felt like the entire time I was reading Fulgrim, I was like, this is just a budget version. Like, this is your Walmart brand version this of is like, the trilogy leading up to it, yeah. essentially. Yeah, it's like you took... Horus Rising, False Gods, and Galaxy and Flames, and combine them all into one book yeah. about different people and a bit worse. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because the uh, it's not well, bad, mind you, but it is. And I, I think part of that is because the the Chaos God that has influence over that one is Slanesh. Yeah, a little, yeah, a little more she's, lame. Yeah, far less interesting. She's the Chaos God of Lust, essentially. So instead of like pus and gangrene and flies and what if bloating, was fucking. Well, like self harming. Also that. That's what sex is, right? Yeah. I don't know how you do it. Don't look at me like that. I don't know how you do it, but, you know. (laughs) Hold on. Back up. Let me Google this. I've been doing it wrong, I think. Um, Wait. If you're not bleeding, it's... (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Okay. Moving on. Yeah, Slanesh is uh, terribly uninteresting. Um, Which is weird, because from all of the things that I heard and read leading up to... This event, uh, Slanesh sounded like she was going to be like a super badass. Maybe her character is, and yeah. the events around. Yeah, maybe later. Right. Uh, I will say the one thing I, I did really like so far is when Solomon, Discount Loken, encounters Tarvitz, has the same reaction of like, "You seem like the only one who knows what's what's up." Yeah, <laughs> and that's how you know that that character it's and gonna, all of them are probably going, going to, to die. die. <laughs> that's that's how it works. I also like how their somewhere. immediate reaction to Lucius as well was, "You seem like a fuckhead." Yeah. See, she looks cool. This is a picture, uh, if I remember to put it up. Oh. Uh, you can just Google Slanesh. Um, Slanesh. If she were to have a hmm. to take human form, that's probably cool. what she would look like. Um, looks like she took a couple trips to Hot Topic. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, she's very... I like uh, going in there. <laughs> she's very... There's nothing in there, but I like going in there. Hot Topic's cool. <laughs> it can be cool. It's pretty lame, though. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have a lot of places in Canada. I don't know why, when you said that, I just... Why? I just pictured you, like, camera whips to you standing in a Hot Topic, just standing there smiling, like, I'm in Hot Topic! <laughs> this is fucking lame! <laughs> like, you're not looking around at anything, you're just like, I'm present! <laughs> I am present! <laughs> this is an experience that I'm having. Wow! Or he's like, oh no, he's back. <laughs> he's back again, <laughs> standing in Hot Topic! This sure is a place I'm at! <laughs> My day couldn't get any better or worse. <laughs> My uh, life is a purgatory. God damn. All right, Mechanicum. Uh, yes, yeah, Mechanicum sorry. has been uh, like exponentially worse than Fulgrim. I actually dislike the book so far. Oh no. Yeah, and I so I'm they probably for me, so I don't have to read it. I'm probably super biased already. I didn't think I would yeah. like Mechanicum because it's it's the machine dudes on Mars, and I'm like. I'm reading this for Astartes Super Soldiers, not for Machine Boys. And so one character is following is, she's like, I'm, I do tech things, I'm smart, but I don't know how I'm doing it. It's like, oh my god, shut the <laughs> fuck up. I don't even care. Uh, the other guy is Kelbor Hall, which, like, he's the bad guy. Like, it's not even spoilers, like, Horus is like, we need him. He's gonna work with us. He's gonna make us bigger guns, bigger boats. <laughs> evil. You're like uh, evil. And then the other side is the guys that are just definitely gonna lose and die to Kelvor Hall. And I'm like, I don't care about anything that's happening in this book. Like, and I see you're trying to develop this character, but we both know you're going to kill him. <laughs> so when you open most of the books in uh, the Horus Heresy, the intro has like quotes from people, right? Uh, so it has a list of characters. It does have quotes, which is really cool. Kind of gets you into it. Um, but this one has, like, a list of characters, and then it has a, like, what what their job is. And it's, like, Astartes, Lord Commander, uh, Primarch, whatever. So I opened this, and it says, Kelbor Hall, Fabricator General of Mars, Mars, Forge Master of Olympus Mons. Okay. Kane, Fabricator Locum of Mars, Forge Master of Mundus Oculum. Don't know what that means. Earthsea Malevinus, Forge Master of Mars. Lucas Crump, Forge Master of Mundus Gamma. Regulus, Mechanicus Representative of Horus Lupercal. Ambassador Malgator. Wait, you say Mecha- Regulus? That, okay, yeah, I recognize yeah, him. Yeah. That, that's a name. Um, Mechanicum Representative to Terra. And I'm reading through all these, and it's like, Princeps of the Warlord, Victor- uh, 
Victorix Magna, that has Princeps to be a of the Warlord, titan. Tharsis has to, uh, Knights or Titans, because uh, they all have to be Princeps. And I'm reading through this, I'm like, I don't know half these words are. And then mm-hmm. when you finally do realize who these people are, you know that he's going to die, he's going to die, he's going to die, he's going to die, because that's been the pattern thus far, and why would they break it now? And that's fine if they do a good job of kind of making you care about the characters. Mm-hmm. But I don't give a fuck about any of them. Like, it's. It- it's just it. And, I, you you have say to, it's been bouncing between the five people. Uh, <laughs> maybe it's been three or four. <laughs> I'm just mixing yeah. them all up now. I couldn't tell you. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no. So there's there's been events happening and things popping off, and I've just been like, the, okay, this guy fought in this thing. Okay, sure. And it was like, yeah, the big explosion went off. Uh, but he lived, and I was like, well, there's nothing to say. He lived, <laughs> and his <laughs> robots destroyed. And it's like. Which which robot was he in? What what is happening? Is he in the one with the guns? Is there like a, a war from Mars happening? <laughs> um, not open conflict. I think it ends in open conflict with Kelbor Hall taking over all of Mars essentially and feeding. Kind of weird that this would all happen literally under the nose of the Emperor. You know, just a hop, skip, and a jump. So the Earth Emperor is hasn't right there. Emperor hasn't been to Mars in two hundred years. He's like right next door. <laughs> He has a lot of people that he thought he trusted feeding him information about this. And I think... So this is why I think Rogel Dorn's going to end up dying. Because there's a lot of people on the inside. Uh, How's Rogel Dorn going to stop the outside and the inside? So. And then the Emperor... By being a badass. Because it... Uh, I, uh, putting his shields up. I, I, I know there's a part... I don't know if it's prior to this or if it leads to this. Where, like, some Chaos Gods are getting a little too close... And the Emperor just literally steps into the warp with, like, a flaming blade and starts killing things. <laughs> I don't know when that happens, but I, I know it's a sequence that happens. So, <laughs> see if, if that's leading up to this or if it's a prior thing. I'll, if we don't read it in these books, I'll have to find that passage that it's from. Like it it might have been in this book, actually. I like if, if it was a case of Horus gets to the Emperor. And it's like, why are you doing this, son? And it's like, well, because of all these reasons... For personal ones. But also, like, everything you're doing is messing up stuff in the warp. They're angry. And he's like, oh, they're angry with what I've been doing. Hold on. Like, just, <laughs> like pulls open reality, yeah. steps through, and just starts swinging at purple <laughs> mist and blowing everything up. Absolutely glorious. Or like, what are you doing? He's like, hold on, son. One second. I'm fixing the warp. <laughs> So yeah, there's a uh, there's another character that dies um, during the uh, Istvan Five uh, part, and like the spirit of that character is fighting with him in the warp. So I th- I guess it's got to happen after that's the timeline. So we got that to look forward. To. There are a lot of books to go through. Uh, Fifty one in total right now, and there's at least a couple of them that aren't actually one book, but like yeah, we got uh, like Tales of Heresy, uh, the Silent War. And War Without End, I believe, that are all just a collection of short stories yeah. leading those, up to it. Those might be ones I should just buy in physical form, but if I start getting yeah. some, I'm going to want all of them. Uh, I know, I need to buy all the books that are there, and there's not enough for both of us. It's so a, it's a little challenging to find. Like, uh, some of the books I can't find. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've been doing audiobooks, uh, and it's been smooth sailing for me. Audible we were, seems to have them all. We were looking into, like, beyond Horus Heresy, into the 40k stuff. Seems to be no audiobooks of, like, any of them. Which like, is... the, there's none on Audible, at least. Black Library seems to have a collection of them. In, like, French. But it, it's also not full books. Like, so this, uh, The Legacy of Caliban, it'll have, like, collection pieces of that from what I was reading yeah. on their website. So that seems poor. Yeah. But then also, regarding the Horus Heresy books, the ones that are a collection of short stories, they don't have just... Here's the audiobook for that. It's like, no, you're going to need to get the short story audiobook for each. $12. Yeah, and it ends up being about twice the price of one an audiobook. Yeah. Not, so. so we'll see how that pans out. A little out. reluctant. But. <laughs> or me and Miles read them and fill you in. Yeah. Whatever works. But yeah, you could just buy the the books. They're, they're, they're $12 each, I think, on average. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Uh, Start a collection. I want to have them all. I'm getting there. I think I have... 25 about half so you have you, uh how many of them have you been ordering like into like a store for pickup versus just right to your door uh i've ordered about half i have six more coming right now like to your door yeah okay. um and then i'm going to be going to chapters tomorrow okay. to find more 
Because um, there's a few that are just impossible to find. I've been trying to find Age of Darkness, and it does not exist. But that's a collection of short stories, so I'm not heartbroken. Also, there's some books, uh, like there was one that was talking about oh. a a psyker who had a vision or something, and when it has to go against all odds and see the Emperor, and it's like, I don't give a fuck. What are the studies around her doing? Because <laughs> I want to see probably dying. I'm here for the war and the death and the the the. <laughs> I the say, yeah. And I, I certainly don't like mind like dying. the. I don't mind reading about the cool like political background stuff that's going on. But when it comes to like one psyker's adventure across the universe, I'm like, nah. <laughs> one <laughs> <Don't> man <care. laughs> on a mission. One man, one machine. <laughs> it's so silly, and they can like. If Garrow hadn't have been on a Stardis, I still would have been interested. Ye. Just not as. Ye. So. And the really Stardis with a peg leg. Yeah. yeah. Say Pangling? Uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> pangling. With a peg leg. Oh, with a peg leg, yeah. Oh my god, a penguin with a peg leg? <laughs> pangling, pangling. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, hey, Mrs. Obama, get down! <laughs> Do it for this week, eh? Uh, or do you have more to talk about for Mechanicum? No, I'm going to finish Mechanicum and then, um, <laughs> I guess, jump straight to, assuming I have it in time, uh, Nemesis. Because we're going to skip the short story stuff for now, I think. Okay. Um, so, yeah, what we have been doing so far is recapping the events of the books sort of chronologically. And we're probably going to keep doing that. Yeah. Uh, it's just, yeah, we're waiting on Galaxy and Flames to show up for miles. Yeah. Yeah, I technically ordered it first, and it didn't show up. Yeah, he got the uh, Descent of Angels and Flight of the Eisenstein before Galaxy in Flames. So I guess, assuming Galax- or, uh, Galaxy in Flames doesn't show up tomorrow, might as well just read Descent of Angels. Or oh, do we? And then get uh, Galaxy Have in Flames. Have you read Descent of Angels? No. No, I'm... I have about seven or eight hours left to go of Fulgrim. Yeah, we're going to be doing, like, spoiler talk, but up to what latest person has read so we've all read the same content yeah yeah uh, sorry again no that's fine. fine i don't I, it's I, delivery boys some, yeah, well and then i didn't have a lot of time to begin with but now I'm making more time so i'm the reason that we're holding up so yeah. i apologize yeah i think we're all going at a pace yeah i i have to like sit down and bring myself to read mechanicum well and that's the thing with um, and the diablo season is starting like out of Warhammer talk, the Diablo season starting soon. I'm not going to be playing like reading Warhammer that yeah. week. The um, the thing for me too was as I was ramping up into the books, you know, going from Horus Rising to False Gods to Galaxy and Flames. This you know this trilogy of one after another after another. I was getting more and more into it, and it's like I'm going to listen to it like off. Is that just online? Is that the whole book? Oh, you found a place you could read Galaxy and Flames. Well, it's just a PDF. Cool. I mean, I if you got to do what you got to do, like you've already paid for the book, yeah. it's coming. Like you're, whatever. I didn't even. It didn't even dawn on me to try this. God, that's gonna be hard to read. Anyway, like I so, can't read off of a phone screen. <laughs> so but I've yeah, been. Sorry, continue. So I've mostly been listening to the audiobooks on my commute. I'll start reading. Right, so I get about a half hour there, half hour back, so about an hour a day. Yeah. So but with the, the original trilogy of books and including Eisenstein, I was getting so into it where it's just like. I get home and it's okay. like, well, I'm gonna keep listening. This is awesome. What's happening? And then I, you know, turn it off after about another hour, maybe. So I was making advanced progress with Fulgrim. I'm back to just, I'll listen to it when I'm driving. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because uh, some of the books, I think, generally we're interested in kind of the same stuff. Um, like obviously, complexity of the story is fine, but it's it has to be interesting. Um, yeah. Like, it ends up with Galaxy and Flames covering so many characters and things happening, but I'm interested in all of it. And then Flight of the Eyes this time leads off of that. And then Fulgrim is just like, here's a handful of characters I don't give a fuck And it's about. weird. I found myself kind of tuning out almost any time they initiate, like, a big, you know, war-scale conflict with an alien race that you know isn't important because does not exist in 40K. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, I think in none of the books we've read so far, they've... They've made references to Eldar and orcs and stuff like that, but you've they've never covered a conflict with any of. Oh yeah, like a real time yeah. in the book, you know what I mean? It's always like, oh, it's the Laren, it's the Megarachnid, it's like, oh yeah, these one-off species that get extincted and yeah. don't don't matter. Like I, I guess I want there to be a an orc battle, uh, an Eldar battle. Uh, that is coming. I want the Tyranids to show up. I, I think. Um... Uh, Sanguinius is sent to fight uh, Demon Prince. 
so that's a relevant battle. Yeah. Um, and then... I guess that's a good way of putting it. Not just, like, the race's relevance, but, yeah, it's... When the battles... You can tell when they're not relevant. Yeah, yeah. I see your book copy of it. Galaxy? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we're also starting to realize that there's certain authors we like more than others. Dan Dan Abnett. Abnett. I was going to say, that's, that's the one Abnett I've liked so far. one of the best. Um, and I really like... Who's, who did uh, Eisenstein? Uh, James Swallow. And then Graham McNeil's the one that did False Gods, Fulgrim, and Mechanicum. Yeah, so Graham McNeil... Maybe the weakest... Uh, yeah, uh, the... Well, False Gods was pretty good. The False Gods was my favorite of the trilogy. Yeah. Um, but he tends to spend a lot of time describing things that... Uh... You're okay, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of times describing things that... Maybe don't need it. Aren't, aren't as interesting to me. Or so I found uh, Dan Abnett. He would describe things a lot in meticulous detail, but in less of a "this is what it was" and more "I'm going to des- describe aspects of it." It was more of a show don't tell yeah. type writing style. And it was um, I've noticed like uh, like one example like um, Graham McNeil would say like and this room was hot, this hot, and okay, cool. they would do this and blah blah blah, and then Dan Abnett would be like, and the character felt. The surface of the sun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he would say what the character was feeling, because I want to see the character's perspective. I feel like uh, oftentimes with Graham's stuff, it'll be here... I don't know if I'm saying his name right. G-R-A-H-A-M. Graham. Graham. Yeah. Um, or he, Graham. <laughs> Graham. It'll be like, here's, it is the, the... here's the environment, and now here's character stuff, rather than mixing it together. Mm-hmm. And it, it kind of pulls me out of it a It bit. seems to be the full book, which is nice. It's at 158 pages, but... It's, it's different in a PDF. It's obviously not. Different yeah. font size, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. So, cool. I'll start reading that until Galaxy and Flames shows up. Yeah. I'm gonna read that you have a bit time. trying to line up where you are in the... <laughs> I'll by chapters. I'll fucking figure it out. Chapters, it be... All right. So yeah, next week will be. Uh, I will now that I have that. I will have start advancing in Galaxy. And I I might have the whole book right by the time we show up, we party up. Yeah. With that <laughs> with that PDF thing, was there an option to make the background black and the text white? Don't know, because that would make it a heck of a lot. Yeah, I can't read on my phone on screen anymore. I can. I used to all the time, but it hurts my eyes. I can. Let me see. I uh, there was a while where I was trying to get into. Like ebooks like oh. on my phone or whatever, and yeah, I just oh, like it doesn't hurt my eyes or necessarily or anything. I just can't. It's one of those things. Be where, interested? I don't know. Uh, yeah, like I'll be reading a book and I'll be like, "Oh, let's check emails. Let's yeah. check Reddit. Let's check anything." But and then this... I stop reading. But when I'm holding a book, I'm like, "No, I'm, hold- I'm holding the book and reading the book." Yeah. I can put my phone down and don't touch it. So I'm done reading. Generally. All right. All right, yep, yeah, that's the end that's of... That's uh, the first, but technically whatever the sixth, of, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, cause we're going to try and maybe get our talks that we did before as part of the, the main podcast. Yeah. Separate them out and put them... Yeah, up. so this will be episode one. Uh, those will be, like, prequel. Yeah. Memes. Prequel memes. Cool. Tune in next week for the... Uh, Exciting, Exciting adventures King. of Galaxy and Flames. Yeah. As we discuss. If you want to read along with us, good luck with that figuring out. Because yeah, we don't even know what we're reading. <laughs> yeah, so, sorry, lads. I should have thought of that before. I, there's a PDF for everything on the internet. I don't know why I didn't think about so it. I didn't think right now. I'm usually smart sometimes. I'm usually smart sometimes. No. What? <laughs> Are, Are we fighting? <laughs> Are we best friends? <laughs> Alright, it's the end of the... Uh, Smooth, but... Warhammer Corner.